Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's an old definition of abuse of power. Rules for thee, but not for me. That's exactly what's happening here today. House Democrats are preparing once again to break another president of the United States House of Representatives. It's an open secret that the American people are facing substantial challenges today. Many of these challenges are Washington inflicted of one party rule caused by a Biden administration incompetence and radicalism. Absolute chaos on the southern border. Out of control crime. Record breaking gas prices and inflation. A broken supply chain. A historic labor shortage. A failing education system. And of course, the humiliating surrender in Afghanistan. Will this Congress be remembered as the Congress that addressed those serious challenges? Not a chance. Instead, I believe this Congress will go down in history as the broken Congress. For nearly four years, as the House Republicans have been voicing the needs of millions of Americans, House Democrats have broken nearly every rule and standard in order to silence dissident and stack the deck for their radical, unpopular agenda. They broke the motion to recommit, first time in the history of Congress. They broke impeachment, not once, but twice. They broke in-person voting and replaced it with proxy voting, the first time in history. And they broke the minority's right to appoint members of its own choosing to committees. The Speaker is burning down the House on her way out the door. What's worse, we got to this point on the basis of a double standard. Democrats want to change the rules but refuse to apply them to their own caucus. I listened to the Speaker talk about the highest standards. Madam Speaker, when a Democratic chairwoman flew to Minneapolis and told an angry crowd during a trial to stay on the streets, get more active, get more confrontational, we've got to make sure they know we mean business. That high standard, the Democrats refused to take action. The trial judge actually singled her out on her comments on an ongoing basis, which he said could become an issue on appeal. But this wasn't the first time. No. This is three times. At a rally in Los Angeles, that same chairwoman, she told a mob, if you see anyone from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them that they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. She later defended that comment in another speech in L.A., saying the same chairwoman of the high standards. I did not threaten Trump, constituents, and supporters. I do that all the time. But I didn't do it that time. This side of the aisle didn't ask that chairwoman to lose her committee. We simply asked for an apology. Meanwhile, that high standard with Speaker Pelosi and Leader Hoyer, defended her. When asked about her Minneapolis comments, Leader Hoyer described her as passionate. She believes in her issues. She believes she should get in your faces. And Speaker Pelosi, oh, what did she do with that high standard? She compared her comments in Minneapolis to Dr. King's civil rights movement. You see, why would they do that? Rules for thee, but not for me. Just this month, the dossier's principal source was arrested by a special counsel, Durham, for lying to the FBI. Think about everything that dossier put this country through for two years based on fabricated evidence. The infringements of due process, the spying on the presidential campaign, and, of course, the $32 million spent by hard-earned working taxpayers for a Mueller investigation. And yet, 
the Democratic chairman says, I don't regret it. Why? Rules for thee, but not for me. When the Speaker of the House, on this very floor, engaged in personalities, the floor shut down for three hours because no one wanted to take to the top. Her entire caucus that believed in the higher standard voted to keep her words in the record rather than strike them down. Why? Rules for thee, but not for me. The speaker said, I stand by my statement. I'm proud of the attention that's being called to it. It's never happened before in the history of this body. Why? Because it's a broken Congress that believes in rules for thee, but not for me. This is part of a larger pattern. When a congressman on the Intelligence Committee was targeted by a suspected Chinese Communist Party agent for years, the Democrats kept him on the committee. Why? Rules for thee, but not for me. When a Democrat congresswoman said, Israel was hypnotized the world. That supporting Israel is all about the Benjamins. And that 9-11 was, some people did something. The Democrats actually defended her. Why? Rules for thee, but not for me. And when a member of the Democratic leadership tweeted a week ago, lock up Kyle Rottenhouse and throw away the key, in an attempt to sway an ongoing trial, the Democrats said nothing. Why? Rules for thee, but not for me. Let me be clear. I do not condone violence, and Representative Gozar had echoed that sentiment. The video was deleted, but Democrats won't listen because they will do anything to distract from the failures of one-party rule in one year destroying a nation. For Democrats, this vote isn't about a video, it's about control. That's the one and only thing Democrats are interested in. Not condemning violence, not protecting the institution, not decorum or decency, just control. The Democrats want control and they don't care about the consequences. They're destroying this institution, silencing the minority, and therefore silencing millions of Americans. When I talk to Democrat leadership, when they told me what they wanted to do, I asked a simple question. Have you seen the video? No, haven't seen it. But they knew exactly what they wanted to do. It's interesting. Without even watching, they decide the punishment. Why? No need. Rules for thee, but not for me. What they have started cannot be easily undone. Their actions today and the past have forever changed the way the House operates. It means that the minority rights that have served this body as well are the things of the past. And furthermore, it means that under the Pelosi president, all the members that I have mentioned earlier will need the approval of a majority to keep those positions in the future. What was interesting is it's not just the speaker that's making those decisions. When the chairwoman incited those ideas three times, everyone in the Democratic Party had ability to vote what they thought. Because of those high standards, they all voted to table. They all voted to table, not to remove this chairwoman from committee, to ask for an apology. Why? Because you all believe in rules for thee, but not for me. That legacy is a real culmination of Speaker Pelosi's career. Make no mistake, the House is weaker, more partisan, and more self-focused today than when Speaker Pelosi became Speaker less than four years ago. Future Congress will suffer for it. More importantly, 
the American people have needlessly suffered because of it. They won't soon forget it. It's about control. It's not about a standard that everybody lives by. It's a standard you enforce on one but not upon yourself. You encourage your own side to engage further when you all took a vote to table. It'd be interesting to see if your leadership hasn't watched the video. How many of you who vote today have watched it? When it was requested, I contacted the member. He took the video down. He put a statement that he does not believe in violence to anyone. But you see, when others on the other side of the aisle incite violence, it's okay. Because it's words for the, rules for these, but not for me. Unfortunately, this body has suffered greatly. And a new standard will continue to be applied 